So let's bring in from Dubai, NJ Ayuk, Executive Chairman of the African Energy Chamber, a leading energy advocacy organization headquartered in South Africa. We thank you for coming through on the show tonight, Ayuk. Thank you for your time this late in the evening. Let's get started. Are you seeing some progress? You. Are you seeing some progress so far? Just two days. But do you think some progress have been made as the COP28 summit enters the second day over there? Thank you for having me. I think we just started on the summit and a lot of declarations have been made, a lot of promises have been made and expectations have been made. The negotiations are going to start very soon. We're hoping to have some really tough and fruitful negotiations, but we would let the leadership, the presidents and the secretary generals make their comments and make their wishes, but we would have to really get right back on the table and deal with the real issues and not the demonization of fossil fuels because we think that the demonization of fossil fuels that we're seeing is just wrong. And but, but I, I still think there is still time for us to get together and get a deal before the end of this COP. What do you make, NJ, of the UN Chief Guterres hitting hard on fossil fuel in his opening remarks today? You know, I, I love Antonio Guterres. He's always been somebody who said, we need to walk in a multifaceted, multilateral way. I think really going hard and hitting hard on fossil fuel industry and where you have many of the nations that are UN members, it is really, really unfortunate. I hope we hear returns back to the old Gutierrez that we used to know that wanted to walk um, and, and find uh, across lines and find solutions because that's his job. But for a man who comes out of Portugal with a very small population, about 15 million, and then you look at Brazil, that, that is almost three or four times its population, or Angola, or African countries, he needs to be worried about the greenhouse gas emissions of Portugal that is higher than the entire African continent and higher than Brazil and higher than most emerging nations. I think he should not be um, having that moral authority to, to criticize African countries that want to use fossil fuels. He should be working with them. Uh, but, but, but what is the message of African oil producers uh, and, and the continent in general for the COP28 meetings? What's the message over there? The message is that Africa needs to continue producing natural gas because we need natural gas to be able to industrialize. Because when we industrialize Africa, we know what that means? That means jobs. Jobs are everyday people, everyday young people that don't have to cross the Mediterranean or the Sahara trying to go to Europe. It means revenues for governments so they, can, they cannot step down into recessions. It means more taxes for local communities so they can build a lot of local infrastructure to really raise that. It means education. And that is what we must bring that to bear dealing with the sustainable development goals. But the African countries also have to see how we deal with our enabling environment issues. And that is really being put to, to there. But we also have to deal with some historical climate issues. But the first question in my speech today, I asked them was, where is the $100 billion you promised? You've not delivered broken promises, broken pledges, failed promises of the past. And that's the big question which African leaders ask in this call. Is this going to be one more of those failed promises of the past? Or is this going to be an elite gathering to, to, to talk about our issues as if with some kind of academic exercise on today sitting and sipping their champagne and drinking and drinking their latte and eating their goat cheese while everyday people are suffering. Don't forget, we're still the continent with 600 million that have no access to electricity, 900 without access to clean kicking te technologies, most of them women. That should be the real issue and not an elit elitist drive to saying that stop using fossil fuels while most of the wealthy nations are using it. The wealthy nations need to decarbonize, African nations need to industrialize. That's going to be our message over the next few days and I'm going to make them stay on message. Yeah, you're going to get a message. That's my uh, point about what your own message is at uh, the African Energy Chamber for the COP28 summit. You're talking about broken promises. We talk about $100 billion. I think the figure is much more than that. I think it's about $300 billion if you take it all the way down to the year 2050 in the manner of speaking. So we need to make progress as far as things are concerned. Today, uh, the UAE announced about a $30 billion climate fund, says that could go to $250 billion US dollars. The loss and damage uh, uh, deal fund was about, had about $450 million yesterday. 
Do you think these are still just my pledges as we heard in the past, but no real money on the table? They are just pledges. When I talk about 100 billion, it was done in 2009. If you add that up today, we're talking about $1.4 trillion that has not been paid. So they are just pledges, and we, we should not even get into loss and damage when they're still back there. But we need to even think about this in a better way. It's not about what they owe or loss and damage. It's about let Africa make its own choice. We, they should use that money that they've not paid us to use carbon capture technology and sequestration and suck up the um, um, greenhouse gas emissions in the air. The problem is not oil or natural gas. The problem is emissions. So turn to technology and take out the emissions in the air and let's continue to produce our natural gas because we need base load technology. Our heavy industry in Africa, steel and manufacturing is going to need base load. We need to do the energy poverty issues and we need to do the industrialization issues. Let Africa make its own choices. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a little bit hypocritical for them at this moment when they open new coal fire plants, Norway is doing 52 oil licenses, the UK is doing more than 200 licenses, the US is opening more than 10 all federal lands for drilling. And then you turn to African countries, you say leave it in the ground. I think that's a little bit that's a little bit dishonest of the wealthy nations who are producing more and they continue to do that. Take for example the country Uganda, they're going to produce about 230,000 barrels, and it's a big fight today that they need to leave it in the ground. 230,000 barrels is nothing, it's just 1.8% of US production. We can't get caught up in this con game where, it, where Africa becomes a victim again. And we, we need to be very careful not to get into the, into the realm of, of, a, of a new colonial drive to keep our resources in the ground. We stand very strong with the leadership. We have, have met with most African presidents. I have discussed with their negotiating teams and we're putting position papers and we are ensuring that Africa's position is firm, it's very strong, it's not influenced by NGOs that have nothing but only solar and wind. Solar and wind are part of the solution, but they're not the only solution. Okay, so, so uh, just yesterday, what's your take on OPEC Plus deal on deeper costs of about 2.2 million barrels per day to the uh, first quarter of 2024? Bring me up to speed on that. What's your take at the ASC? That deal was a deal that was accepted already in June. The ministers had negotiated that already in June. They had established a baseline for what many African countries will be producing next, uh, next year. They had, they, there were some discussions in June and many disagreements in June. But what happened is that they said, we're going to listen to Reichstadt, S&P Platz, that's actually formerly IHS, and we're also going to listen to Wickwood McKenzie, that all these third-party sources will combine data because it has to be data-driven and see what your potential is and then build a baseline and then build the cuts based on that so that we can look at what you produce next year. Some African countries are not very happy with the outcome, but that's also a warning shot to us. We got so many deals for that are stuck in the office of bureaucrats. We have to really demonstrate that we can increase our production. So we need, so we need to sign deals. I always say sign, baby, sign. There is amazing opportunities, for example, Nigeria, to ramp up production, cut crude oil theft, and even produce somewhere to 1.8, 1.9 um, 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 million barrels a day. Right now, our numbers are showing at, at about 1.5 if they do a really, really good job. Angola, the same. Angola, we're looking at saying maybe they could go up to 1.2, but they need to ramp it up. They need to get those deals out. Same with Congo. Equatorial Guinea is seeing a, a big, a big um, decline. So African countries should not only complain what they get out of the OPEC deal, they need to go back to the to the, to the boards, approve deals, get these fields moving again, get the private sector working again, cut taxes, incentivize this, and make it really, really bankable so we can become competitive in the market. Don't forget, our crude oil production rate in Africa is going to reduce in 2024. We are going to go from 6.9 to potentially 6.2 million barrels a day. That's 700,000 barrels of oil, crude oil loss. You can imagine what it means to revenues, jobs, investment, and everything into, for everyday people. That's really what we should be worried about. And we, we need to stick this, this big smack and get right back to work and lift up Africa again. But the leadership 
and the ministers and the bureaucrats, they need to approve deals and let investment flow in. All right. Well, we thank you so much for making the show tonight. NGI, you can we appreciate your insights into the ongoing COP28 summit there in Dubai. We'll check in with you just as the uh, COP28 gets towards the end on the 12th of December. Thank you so much, Executive Chairman thank you. of the we, African Energy thank Chamber. Thank you. We're going to be keeping them, we are going to be keeping them honest. Thank you thank so you much. So we much. appreciate it uh, there in Dubai tonight.